Hi, Melissa Hall here, and I have a matted 11-year-old domestic short hair male, and he's pretty matted, as you could see here. I'm going to begin by doing his nail trim, and on his head is a green e-collar from Smart Practice. He has very long, sharp nails. I always do a background check on my cats. And when I was talking to the pet owner, she said that this cat is one of five cats that lived behind her restaurant. And when they retired, they took the cats home with them. She said that he often growls and bites at home, can be nippy. She wasn't sure how he would do. He is very matted. And the veterinarian that he typically sees for his once a year shave down is backed up for three months. So I told her I would give it a shot and we will see how it goes. So I am using Walls KM10 cordless clipper and a number 10 blade. I have on my arms Kevlar sleeves from Amazon. A lot of people use them for automotive work, all kinds of stuff, but I like to use them for uh, keeping myself safe from scratches because I do a lot of cats. So I begin my clipping with the grain to set a tail palm line, about a third of the tail. His tail's very greasy, very dirty. It does have some matting on it as well. He could really, really use a bath. He smells bad. He also has some fecal matter stuck back here matted into the back end. Um, I have the green e-collar on his head to block his view. And since he does have a reputation of being um, an out, you know, he was outside at one time and he is pretty matted and prior sedation grooming, um, just see how he does. But the pet owner did tell me they can pet him and that he's friendly at home. Um, just to be cautious. I do not groom dogs. I groom cats. I am a uh, cats only groomer. You can uh, purchase the uh, clipper and the uh, e-collar on the cat's head at Ryan's Pet Supplies. He's like, oh, thank you. Please get that off of me. He wants some help, but I do suspect as I go into the insides of the legs and the belly and underneath that I will be met with some possible aggression. But first I wanna get all this matting off. It takes me a total of a little over 13 minutes for this matted cat shave. I will bathe him and dry him. Total groom time is um, under an hour. I'd say maybe 45 minutes complete and he desperately needed that done. And he didn't have to get sedated, so I was proud and glad to say that even though he smelled bad, as you see by my face, um, and he does try to come after me a couple of times, he did extremely well. I did recommend for the future that he come in for bathing and that we avoid lion cut trimming for him. As you will see as this process goes on, I knew that this under this top part would be okay, but when I feel the heavy matting around the back end and the legs, I can tell for his age that that is uncomfortable for him, and I don't want to have to remove matting uh, there. I don't want to have to shave that area if not necessary. He is growling and kind of hissing, not sure if you can hear it. My voiceover um, that I'm using sometimes has a mind of its own and shuts everything off. But he is growling at me uh, slightly and hissing. And I may move to that other muzzle to the side, the white and purple ball that you see there. That is an air muzzle recommended by the National Cat Groomers Institute. You can buy it at the National Cat Groomers Institute or you can buy it at Ryan's Pet Supplies. Enter the code cat groomer and get free shipping if you've never um, ordered from Ryan's before. And you can get that green e collar there too. I've been shopping at Ryan's Pet Supplies uh, my entire grooming career. I think that may be soap on my back. Nobody ever tells me when there's something on my back when I'm shooting these uh, 
videos. And we did have a busy cat day um, this day. But I wanted to give you guys um, a view of um, a cat groomer in the day, what, what I do in the day. I mean, things that come in. And um, I might be clipping a little slower. I do turn a lot on my table because cats aren't like a dog. They're not going to want to be picked up, picked up. They are going to get mad at me. He's already hissing. So I'm going to actually put him in the um, other muzzle because I feel um, that he's escalating. And if I block some more of his view, that that will help make him um, more comfortable if he can see less of me. And he's already like... You know how they, and I'm like, you saw me jump. Yeah, so I think he'll be better if he can see less of me because he really needs to get this off of his skin, this matting um, as quickly as possible. And um, yeah, he reeks. I tell people if you've ever heard that song, Smelly Cat from the TV show Friends, he is definitely that. He was very smelly. But my main uh, goal was to get the matting off of him and get him into um, somewhat of a lion cut type trim so he is more comfortable. I use two hands when I clip, always stretching the skin and he's laying up against my body. I don't use a noose on a cat. Oftentimes cats just like to lay up against you. Um, a lot of groomers they're so dog oriented in their mind it's it's hard to understand um but I'm a cat person too I mean I, I do have dogs but I'm a cat person and when I brush my cats I, I grab them and brush them on my lap I mean I see people making their cats dance on TikTok I mean there's there's things that we sometimes have to do um and this cat needs to be uh shaved for his matting that he had prior so I'm just going to keep working on him. One of the things I tell uh, pet professionals is just keep um, working. Sometimes people think that cats need a break or put him away. He will never calm down. In fact, he's got a turkey timer and it is running. We actually should be moving quickly and um, working fast, effective, and efficient with each one of our clipper strokes and the proper tools and techniques will help you be more successful at this and helping the cats that you come and see in your grooming practice as well as the pet owner. So I'm getting under his armpits. I found that this would probably be an easier way to get under his cat armpits. If I had a helper that was holding him down, it would make him angry. I know that some groomers like to work with the helper and I encourage you to do at your work level. But for me and many of the students that um, I'm around, he's like trying to get me. I'm like, it's okay, baby. <laughs> but for me, I find that uh, oftentimes being alone is better. So I'm going to show you guys a technique called the towel twist. There's me telling my employee to go around because she's getting a, picking up a cat. But I want to show you this technique um, where I twist it. And sometimes it makes the cat feel like they're being held. And it'll let me do things to them um, without... Uh, what I would say, throwing hands, catching these hands, because he was trying to, wanting to scratch. He wanted to start swinging at me. So he's got his little towel twist, his little scarf of a towel. I like the big, thick, fluffy towels for this. It's not too tight. And I'm just going to hurry up and get this matting off the sides of his body and these legs. Because as I said in the beginning, I knew by his age that he would probably let me do the parts that he liked, but the parts that he doesn't like are those back legs. And I often call those the hard parts. Some people, um, including pet professionals, I will get cats in my salon half shaved. And I always say there's no discount because you left me the hard parts, which are usually the belly and the insides of the legs and the back legs and the rear end. So I think that it's best for him if I really uh, quickly just put him on my lap and get these back legs done. Like I said, he's around 11 years old, so I know that he is older and that this isn't going to feel good with the um, matting that he has. 
So using the number 10 blade and keeping the skin and um, nice and flat, I can get underneath the matting on those legs quickly. His skin for an 11 year old is actually quite uh, well. It's not uh, very thin, so that is good. And he doesn't have very much to do, but he does not want me to do it. And it is matted here. So I have him laying down um, on my lap and he's under my wing. He could, if, he can get away, but I'm just hurrying and getting it done. He wants to get away. Cats often want to get away from us. Uh, dogs often want to get away from us. My mom bred Scottish Terriers and they often didn't like their nails trimmed. Husky dogs often cry when we blow them out but we have to get through, I mean, as quickly as possible. The longer I take and prolong the groom, the more I'm causing stress, the more the cat is escalating. They have a turkey timer that's running and some cats it's shorter than others. This cat, I was already warned that it was shorter than others possibly. So I need to get in this matting effective and efficiently. And he's laying there now in my lap with the towel on him. If he tries to scratch me, he's going to scratch that towel. Now he's just got his paw there. He could just be batting. He could be pooping. He could be flipping out. But he's actually letting me on my lap. This is keeping it so an assistant is not getting scratched up. And he's all over the table. And the groom is seeing me. It would, it would actually seem more stressful, in my opinion, if there were two people um, working on him. but I'm just cleaning up. He did have a pretty matted uh, rear end back there. And it just, he is, he smells. I think he um, may uh, urinate a little bit on himself. Uh, some cats I suspect as they age often um, have a little bit of um, issues with that. And I'll, I'll smell um, urine, uh, I think, when they go pee or there maybe their box is too low. They may need a different litter box, different litter. But he was matted um, pretty good because there is a shortage of getting into places and doing things. And I just have his legs. They're just so he can't kick me. And I just hold his little feet so he's not wild and flailing. They... National Cat Groomers calls it controlling the three Fs, the frantic, the freak out, and the fra flailing. You don't want that going everywhere. It's He's panicking if you're doing that. So just got to get in that delicate little leg area really quick. And I'm telling him, it's okay, buddy. I've almost got you all done there. Get all your little mats out of your butt. And you are done. This shave, as you see, I'm finished. It's just a little over 13 minutes here. Um, I'm just going to get his last little belly here. I'm holding his little arm so he doesn't punch me. I'm going to get it around this last little bit of his chest. Oop. Oh, he's got some too on his leg here, just a little bit. But total groom time was less than 45 minutes, and he does really well for the bath and the blow dry. And as you can see, he's inside the air muzzle, and that's all the hair I shaved off him. And here he is for the bath. I didn't need any e-collar, any muzzle, or anything for the bath. I've gotten pretty good over the years to know who will enjoy bathing, and I had a strange feeling that he would be one of my cats that wouldn't mind the bath, that that shaving was probably going to be the worst for him. And he said, where has this been all my life? I did a um, Chubbs Bar scrub on him, and now I'm using a little bit of Chris Christensen's Clean Start just because he had a lot of dandruff. So I like pressure release nozzle. I'm showing you how the water is just not constantly running, and you can keep that close to the cat's body. You can squeeze it to have more pressure, squeeze it to have less pressure, and control it. And I'm going to rinse all the um, shampoo off of him. And like his bath isn't even five minutes long. It's very quick, but I'm going to wash all that nasty, greasy, dandruff, smelly cat, urine, 
crusty smell, and maybe he'll get to sleep in the bed tonight with his pet owner. Because I told her that when she picked up. I said, he deserves to sleep in the bed with you guys tonight. I'm going to get under that chin. But the bathing did not bother him. And he's really a sweet cat. Always looking for the escape route. <laughs> I love this tub. The tub I'm using is a flying pig tub. And it is their small one. It's cat size. And I have a rack in the bottom from Forever Stainless. But I really like um, this tub for cats. And I don't use any nooses or anything on my cats. And um, I'm just rinsing off the shampoo. I really make sure I rinse it all out of their hair. Cats are love to lick themselves. And we don't want any issues with anything on them. And he's being such a good boy. I'm going to dry him off with a microfiber towel. Because I want to get him dry. I don't want to have to use the dryer too much. And I'm telling him that he's the best kitty in the whole world. And that he deserves to sleep in the bed tonight, like I told you, completely. And you can see his scars and stuff from just being an outside life at one time. But she says they all live inside now. They're actually all pretty nice. I've groomed them all now. All five cats. They're all very sweet. And actually, one of them passed away recently. One of her older ones, I groomed her, and she had intestinal lymphoma. She actually did really well here, too. And she was just a bath cat. So I'm going to wrap him up. Oh, tell him he's sweet. And I'm going to clean his ears because I suspect that they are really dirty. And I always sniff my cotton. It's just something I do because oh, I'm going to clean his eyes and make sure that I'm cleaning it with saline solution and not my ear cleaner because my ear cleaner would burn. And so that is just something I do. And, uh, you know, ear cleaner would burn an eyeball, not an ear. But, yep, they're a little greasy, a little dirty. And I'm just wiping out the inside, not really digging in the ear canal itself, getting the grease and the dirt in his ears. And he doesn't have any ear mites or anything. I think she told me she had a bout of ear mites at her house, and she was concerned. But uh, he didn't really have anything going on. But it's part of the service that I do. And it's uh, when you come here for training, if you're going through the National Cat Groomers, this is what I did at school. We cleaned the ears, the eyes, we bathed them. But I put a happy hoodie on his head. And uh, the happy hoodie will help block the um, air from the dryer. And I like to pull their little whiskers out so his whiskers aren't pulled in behind the hoodie. I'm going to put this green e-collar on him. I think I'm laughing at my cameraman there. Um, but uh, who is my husband, who helps me a lot in here, very patient man. But I have the green e-collar on from Smart Practice because I don't know exactly how he's going to do. And I use a Caddyshack Vac system, drying system for cats. I used it when I went to the National Cat Groomers School, and I loved it. And um, it took me about a year after I graduated in 2014 to save to be able to buy it. And I love to dry cats in there. It blocks their escape route. It's way better than when I traditionally uh, dried in the dog grooming salon type environments. Oh, and there's me uh, lecturing about how you should always wear ear protection. Because after 20 years of grooming, I do not hear so well. And um, yeah, so I recommend getting some ear protection. You could get something uh, better than that big gaudy stuff that I have on. And I noticed that he's actually doing quite well for the dryer which is exactly what i thought he would do and that is why my future recommendation to this pet owner was bath and blow dry and i could show her this video which i did uh, how well he did because he did do well way better um with the bath and the blow dry even if he had all his hair i think that he would like that much better than being shaved especially on his legs now that he is 11 and he's not going to want to be shaved anymore. And I do think that he would be prone to being matted again because his hair is um, greasy and he gets very dandruffy and dirty. We don't know his history. Like she said, she found him in the back of her restaurant living there as a feral cat. He's peeing and I'm collecting it so I don't have to uh, bathe him again. A lot of my cats love to pee in the dryer 
It reminds me of like when a little kid like hits water. Some of them pee in the tub and some of them pee when I dry them. I always try to catch it better now than when um, I get you all dry and I don't have to wash you again. But I'm going to clean it up real quick. That's why I have everything on top of my caddy shack, as you see, uh, so I can just clean real quickly. I got my reader glasses up there, paper towels, and, a, you know, my Mountain Dew, <laughs> which I actually gave up recently. So, But he's doing really well in the caddy shack vac system. The dryer I'm using is a canine mini fluffer with variable speed. That is key. You're going to want something with variable speed. And you can take those nozzles off and control the level of how, you know, the air is coming out. And this dryer uh, blows room temperature air. So, and he did really well for that. And now I just go over him really quick and get everything else that I need to get off that was left. which wasn't very much. I think I had like a minute or two of little shaving, but I did put that on him just to finish him up really quick. I'm going to comb out his little kitty face. And I really like this pink comb uh, from uh, Utsumi. It's their cat comb. It's a really nice little pink comb. I, I picked it up and I, I really like it. I can't remember what trade show I was at, but yeah, and he looks great, nice and smooth. He has actually grown back from this. I've seen him uh, since making this video a few times, and he looks great on the bathing schedule. I'm just combing out his little underneath his little chin. But you can see he's got a nice little smooth lion. If I see anything else, you know, on him, I could touch up with my uh, wall bravura. I like to use a uh, wall bravura on my clean cats. You can make a nice straight line and I could, I'll demonstrate that for you right here. So I wanted to do it nice and short for her because the condition that he was in. So as you saw, I just went right to the straight line. Those of you that are thinking of certifying for the National Cat Groomers Institute, even though this line may be a little high, you're gonna wanna have nice, straight, crispy lines for your grooming exams. And I find the hair grows back better too when the lines are really straight and nice. But there he is all done. He looks good. Checking him out and then showing you guys, you know. He's like, hey, this isn't so bad. This isn't so bad. And there's 24 minutes of it here for you guys. But like I said, total groom time was under 40 minutes with the bathing, the drying. And it just doesn't really take me um, that long. I'm going to wipe any excess little hairs out of his eyes. And um, call his pet owner to come and get him. But he did great. Thank you guys for watching. You can check me out at catgroomingteacher.com. And you can check out more cat grooming education at the National Cat Groomers Institute. Thanks so much.